Hey guys, today I'll be talking about how much money you need to start an Amazon FBA business in the most feasible way, right? In order to make sure you have a budget for success. I'll discuss the things that may sound super simple, but you should give careful attention to, so you don't go too deep, right? Without any safety measures to avoid losing your money. If you're new to this channel, I'm Anthony Bui Tran from Solid Trade Craft. I reached my first million dollar milestone at the age of 23 a couple years ago by selling profitable private label products on Amazon. Just last year, I partnered up with my buddies Fernando Cruz and Nick Young who are eight-figure Amazon FBA entrepreneurs and we started an FBA community to just find other like-minded people and our Facebook group is called Solid Tradecraft and it's been recognized as one of the most largest and most active Facebook communities out there. And by the way, it was voted best Facebook private label group. So the link is in the description so feel free to join that below. All right, back to the video. If you are planning to start an FBA business soon. Stay with me to the end of this video and I'll show you exactly what the cost is you need to factor in into starting your Amazon private label business on FBA. And unlike the other videos, I'm going to give you a range, right? Because I believe everyone's situation is going to be a lot different. So step by step, I'll be laying down all the things you're going to need from inventory all the way to barcodes and photography. So let's get started. So overview wise, here are some of the costs that we're going to cover. One, uh, inventory cost two product research tools such as Jungle Scout, Market Intelligence. This is software we're gonna be used to be like finding our products. Three, Amazon seller account fees. Four, design works. Five, barcode. Six, photo fees. And seven, inspection fees, right? It's optional, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it, right? Inventory costs. Disclaimer, this is going to be one of the most variable parts of your budget, but the first thing we're gonna be going over is how to determine the inventory costs, right? which consists of your products per unit price, right? And the shipping price per unit. These two numbers combined in the industry is basically called cost of goods sold or COGS for short. So COGS, right? Depending on how your supplier gives you the breakdown of your bill is how you calculate your COGS. To give you an example, make it easier. If your supplier gives you the total cost landed directly to Amazon, let's say it's $5,000 in this example. Then you divide the costs by the number of units and let's say you're getting about 2,000 units for $5,000 landed to Amazon, okay? So 2,000 units for $5,000 landed to Amazon. So to calculate the COGS, what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide the total number, uh, the total cost divided by the number of units. So that's gonna be $5,000 divided by 2,000 units. That's gonna give you a cost of goods sold of 2.5 per unit, right? So that's how you calculate your COGS. So that means every unit is going to cost you $250 to bring to the US and land it directly to Amazon. And keep in mind, in the future, you can reduce this number by ordering more and negotiating more with your factory. So to repeat, the formula for COGS is the total cost divided by the total units. No, that's the total cost you're adding with like sea shipping and not adding things in like photography and inspection fees because those are only one-time costs that are associated with your product. This next part, right, uh, in addition to like inventory costs, the inventory cost is going to change. Uh, it's going to be very variable for all our sellers because everyone's going to order a different amount usually, right? So there's kind of like usually two constraints in general when people start off on Amazon. That's time and money. So in this you know scenario, we're talking more about money. When it comes to affording like your first batch of inventory, I highly recommend you set a budget you can afford to risk, okay? So while Amazon FBA has been successful for many, many people, some of us have lost a ton of money. You know, I've lost a ton of money, uh, not a ton of money, but I've lost money because I made mistakes, right? Because I didn't learn it from others or I didn't have like the right mentors, right? And as you just go through the hardships of that. So when I started, right, when what I budgeted for my first private label product was $5,000. When I launched my first private label product, I was also in my first year of corporate America and at the age of 22 or 23, I think, just to give you guys some more like background perspective of where I was when I first started my Amazon FBA journey. So for the low risk option, right, I always recommend that you go for the minimum order quantity requirement um, that your supplier is willing to give you. And you can even ask to go below their standard MOQ. Sometimes they say like 200 or 300, but in the next batch or in the next number of days, you can ask to like reduce it. And like this strategy, right? Ordering like the minimum order of quantities is something I still do when I'm testing out certain products, like certain products that I'm like less confident in, right? On the flip side, when I'm more confident with my product, 
I would choose to get one and a half times the monthly sales volume. And we'll figure out, uh, you can figure out how to get that with Jungle Scout or Market Intelligence, the product. So if the product sold 100 units a month, I would order 150 units. And that's what I did my, for myself on my first order. That's what I budgeted for, that's what I did. And it's worked out for many people that have advised and for all my students to do so too. So the COGS, right, for my first product was around $3,000 total and I got 1,500 units. So that means the COGS per item was about $2. So keep in mind that everyone's situation is gonna be different. But for this, I would budget around $1,000 to $3,000 for their total cost of goods, right? So this is gonna be for inventory costs. So budget about at least $1,000 to $3,000 to get started. And that's gonna be the cost from your factory for manufacturing the item and shipping. The second thing that you need is the product research tool that will make your life way easier. So there's Jungle Scout on the market, Market Intelligence, and X-Ray right, by Helium 10. There's a couple others on the market, but I personally use Market Intelligence because it's super easy to look for the data you need. Um, it's accurate, has sales estimates, has historical prices to check sales trends. And this is one of the software I recommend to all my students, okay? It's the one me and my team use to find products. But, you know, like, use whichever one you want to use, okay? Like, as long as you're taking action and you're looking at products, I really don't care, like, which one you decide to use. So for Jungle Scout and Market Intelligence, there are two different things um, that both the companies sell. They also have like a web app and a Chrome extension. The only thing you need starting out, right, if you're staying lean is the Chrome extension, right? So Viral Launch, they have like different plans which start at $99, $190 that include the product discovery and the keyword research tool. But there's a plan for $10 where you can just get the Chrome extension and you can just get away with just that, right? If you want to stay lean and just stay focused on one stage at a time and keep your costs low until you may need other tools, I highly recommend just staying with the $9.99 package for just Viral Launch's market intelligence tool. So no matter which plan you picked up, right, uh, the product research tools, we do have an exclusive discount that we did negotiate just for the solo Tricraft community. You can see all of this within the discount codes that we're gonna have in the description below. So make sure when you 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 know you sign up for any of these free trials, right? I highly recommend doing all the free trials for like Jungle Scout, Market Intelligence, or anything like that, right? And sign up, right? And when you sign up using the discount uh, code, you will, so like I said, I was saying, so for all those tools, there's a discount code that you can use to avoid paying the full price. And keep in mind, if you're budgeting, you do not have to be paying monthly for it, right? If you found your product in 30 days or less, you can cancel your membership, right? Especially with market intelligence, so you don't get hit by the reoccurring subscription fee. You can always sign up and decide to be if you're looking for your second or third product or so on, right? So that's one way to keep like the costs a little bit lower for viral launch or for your product research tool by going on going on and off the subscription base. For me, I always have it on because I'm always looking for the product. I believe these tools like basically pay for itself. It's the value is like so worth it there. And you know, so when it comes to like using the research tool like Viral Launch, I would budget in for this category at least ten dollars, right? So nine ninety nine a month, so at least ten dollars. So for the next section, we're gonna talk about Amazon seller plans and fees. The next startup cost you need to factor in is the Amazon seller fees. So after you decided on the product that you're gonna sell and you're ready to set up your Amazon account and start listing your product, in opening an Amazon seller account, there are two different seller plans you can choose from. There is an individual account, which is free, and then there is a professional selling plan, which has a subscription fee of $39.99 per month. This is in the US, from what I understand. When you're starting an Amazon account, you can open up an account for free, right? And if you open up as an individual seller account, you will only pay, you'll pay an extra fee of 99 cents per item up to like 40 items or something, right? And then you have to switch to basically the monthly plan or the, the monthly subscription plan. So what I highly recommend is that once you start your Amazon account, start it off as an individual account so you don't pay the monthly fee of $39.99 and then switch over at the latest two weeks before your products land at Amazon's warehouse. 
because in this situation we'll say like in a situation it takes you like three months to do product research and you wait for your product to arrive by sea it can take 30 or 45 days right so if you wait three months you might be paying an extra 120 dollars in fees right so don't turn it over to the professional selling plan until you're like about to start selling just to save yourself some money it doesn't make sense to pay those fees until you actually start selling by the way Quick trip. Uh, the day you make your first sell on Amazon, add it to a calendar. It's something I celebrate every year. My students and I always look back to see how much we have like learned and grown together. So in general, for the Amazon fees, I budget $40 a month. So the fourth thing to consider is getting a logo done, right? For branding and packaging design. Uh, well, all of those done, right? I would make it, you know, like to starting off, there's a couple options, right? To go about like this within your budget, right? On the low end, like I recommend you searching for a designer on Fiverr. You know, I've used designers on Fiverr before, but look, they're not the best of the best, but they're not that bad either for like what you get, to be honest. Like if you, on Fiverr, not everything is $5 anymore, but paying like some of those guys that are like really top rated for packaging design are $8,500. It's not bad work, especially if your product's super simple and you don't need anything fancy, I would do that. Another place, another option you can do too is check like FreeUp or Upwork and hire like freelancers, okay? So FreeUp is supposed to be basically a vetted like Upwork essentially, right? That's like the people you hire there know exactly what they're doing. So, and then lastly, another thing you can do is ask within the Solar Tradecraft Facebook group for recommendations, right? So for the logo fee, packaging design, the work ranges from 35 to 350, and depending on how your complicated your packaging is, how simple your stickers are, or how fancy or complex, you know, all that is, everything is gonna like cost a different price, right? So keep in mind that designers overseas versus like in the US, right, versus in Western countries are gonna be a lot cheaper. So, you know, setting your options in like Upwork to like Eastern Europe or Asia is gonna be way cheaper, right? And you'll still get high quality work. You just have to look for these guys, right? But if you're looking to invest into your brand, you can also find a high quality designer based in the US who can really convey the branding and understand what you're trying to do and create a branding style guide, right? So a branding style guide basically covers like the color scheme, the font, the text, the formatting that they use and like so on. It just gives you like all the little graphic things, right? So designers in the future who like design stuff for you, right? That are like in Asia or something can use these as reference, right? When they're like designing like your Facebook page cover or Facebook groups or Instagram stuff, any social media stuff you want, packaging inserts, they can just follow this, right? Or when you launch like new products, like they can just follow this branding sty styling guide and it'll be really, really easy for you to like move forward. Okay, so if you're on a more limited budget, you can just kind of start off with a logo and worry about packaging later. That's what I did with my first project. So in general, I would budget for design work anywhere from $35 to at least $350, right? Barcodes, the fifth one we're gonna go over is barcodes. There's gonna be two types. One is like the UPC label, which stands for Universal Product Code, which, you know, like 12 digit code, which helps you determine like uh, you know what you scan stuff on Amazon right and you need this in order to create a listing as of right now on Amazon there's works around to that which I'll kind of mention a little bit later but if you're gonna do everything the right way uh, the proper way and you want to set up your product for a long-term success basically when it comes to barcodes you're gonna need to apply for a GS1 barcode if you want to do things the right way GS1 is basically the global grantor of barcodes. They own a monopoly on barcodes. And the thing is like all these barcodes they give you are brand new and untouched. This is why they charge a premium for these freaking barcodes, right? So on the low end, they'll cost $250 per barcode and they can be charged a yearly fee. But by getting a barcode from GS1, you're gonna be safe from any Amazon future updates and you're gonna also be good for retail if you ever if you're thinking long term and you want to get your product into retail another scenario though right is there's this thing called the gtin exemption and basically if you want to learn more about that um, you can avoid the 200 dollars 50 fee there's some more limitations with going the gtin route but i'll save that for another video but in general for barcodes you need the 250 dollars gs1 barcode to get started on Amazon the right way and get it ready for retail. And then just quick tip, in most cases, the UPC is not what you apply to your package, right, the barcode. There's a 
barcode called a FNSU, in, and that is what you give to your manufacturer. And if you have questions on like how what barcode to use, uh, basically watch my barcode video on Solar Tradecraft channel, and you will see all of it there. But other than that, let's move on to the cost of product photos for your Amazon listing. All right? So there's gonna be two ways to get your products done. Either you can hire other people. Or, in my opinion, you can ask suppliers for the pictures they already took. And then third is you can take pictures on your own. Um, generally though, supplier pictures aren't really good enough for Amazon. And since your primary photo room aim and image is an important factor to improve conversions, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a photographer, right? So you don't have to do it but yourself route. So, for example, if your product is a portable cookware set, you can send one to the local photographers in the U.S. to send or in China, right? But if you're going to send to the U.S. or a Western country, what I recommend is looking and, you know, searching for student photographers, right? That's where Nick and Fernando get some of their photography fun done. And that's something I've been trying to look for in Houston. It just makes it way easier, way cheaper, and they'll take all the photos you need, right? So yeah, I would set up a thing on Craigslist, set up a thing on, you know, a job board for any colleges, and that's how you can find a good local product photographer, right? Because the thing with like having a local product photographer is you can kind of tell them like, hey, I want to angle like this, I want to angle like this. You can actually be at the photo shoot sometimes too. I highly recommend if you do local uh, product right if you do local product photography what you do is you in the long run you want to bring like multiple products at one time so you can like just knock them out all in one batch right and then what you want to do after you get the product photography uh, if the product photographer doesn't do retouching you can hire someone on Fiverr right so online product photographers will charge anywhere from 35 to 55 a photo which is well worth it but consider you know searching in China to find you know photographers that can shoot it faster and a way more affordable rate for photographers, right? So think about it this way. People buy from images alone, right? So there, there's times when I've, you know, just gone on Amazon, I've looked at the main image, it looks good, and then I look at the title, and then I look at the, how many reviews, like the count, like the count, and then what the review rating, if it's like 4.5, you know, or you know, if it's five stars and like a thousand reviews, I just click add a cart. I don't really care about reading the bullets or descriptions. And as long as the images like look good to me, sometimes I'll just like go ahead and buy it. Other Amazon customers view the same way too, right? So at the very end of the day, good images are incredibly important for differentiation between the competition. It's what's gonna catch, you know, the eyes of the customer and it's gonna increase their click through rate. But keep in mind, for the retouching, it can go down as low as a dollar a photo for you know the white background, or five or ten dollars per images for Photoshop. So for photos, I recommend at least budgeting fifty dollars, right, to five hundred dollars roughly when you're first starting out for your photography. There's some people that pay way more for photography, but I just found the cost is to be diminishing in my opinion. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Like all the scenarios are very variable, but I'm trying to give you guys my perspective on what I did with my first product and how I've been kind of budgeting for things, right? Next, inspection companies, okay? I mean, this is optional, but I highly, highly recommend it, right? So hiring inspection company is something you should really consider because what they do is they literally drive to your supplier's warehouse in China, right? And they will actually inspect all of your products in person, take pictures, weigh it, give you the measurements, and give you like this detailed report before the item even gets shipped out, okay? So inspectors will do a full report on any like potential damages on the product, the quality of the product, making sure the packaging is done right, and anything you really ask them to check for like in person, right? Like literally the whole nine yards, because they want to make sure your product is good to go, right? And whatever, you know, questions you have, like they usually do it like as long as it's not too crazy over the top. But inspection companies are there as a third party to help you, right? They enter, they're, you know, they're not biased. Uh, I mean, it's, it could be possible for a inspection company to get paid off by a factory, but that would mean that inspection company would lose all its credibility, right? And in doing so, like, that would ruin their reputation being an inspection company. So inspection companies are guys that are on your side, okay? So this is important if you feel like you're a little skeptical on how the supplier is, right? It may cost you several hundred bucks, like maybe 100 to 300 bucks to for an inspection to company to come in, right? But in the long run of things, 
It is a minimal cost to help you have a professional with a keen eye to detail, right? To just look at these items and really understand, you know, are these items in the right shape? Are they gonna make it to America the way they're packed? You know, are they gonna make it to Amazon's warehouse? Are the right barcodes on it, right? Are these poly bags, right? Does it say made in China on the products? Do the poly bags have suffocation labels on it, right? Like things like that, the inspection company helps double check, right? First, you wanna go ahead and take care of all of this yourself. But at the end of the day, the inspection company is there on your side to help you like check like on these little things. And like I said, with inspection companies, it's way, 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 way cheaper to figure out and find a mistake when it's at your factory, right? Versus when it's on a container shipping to Amazon or even worse, when it gets to Amazon and people are giving you one star reviews because of quality issues, packaging issues, mislabeling issues, a different product arriving, you know, like that stuff like happens. I know I never personally happened to me or anyone that I've known because everyone I know, like I tell them get inspections. Like that's what I tell all my students. I basically require it. I'm like, I strongly, highly, 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 strongly encourage it no matter what, because after the first time you get an inspection, you kind of understand like, whoa, this is like a detailed report and it just feels like legitimate. And it's especially when you're working with a new supplier, you just want to show that like, hey, I'm going to double check your ass so you don't fuck me over, right? And that's exactly what a third party inspection does. And another tip that I do sometimes like long run for you guys in the future is I'll say like, okay, like uh, I'm going to get an inspection in like two weeks or like, hey, like when is a product going to be done? I need a plan for having a product inspection company to come. And in that head, in that, so sometimes like I don't get an inspection done on every single shipment, especially if I trust the supplier, but I'll tell them things like that. And I'll just be like, oh yeah, never mind, I won't get an inspection done. And then you're good to go. But just in case, like, They'll get everything done, make sure it's good, make sure like nothing is like messed up, you know, when the inspection company comes and your all your goods are gonna be good when they're coming to Amazon. Yeah, so to summarize that, um, budget at least $100 to $300 per day for an inspection company. So, total cost. So let's recap everything that I just talked about, right? You know, photos, inspections, product tool, all of this, right? So the first one's gonna be cost of goods sold, the shipping plus the shipping, right? Second is product research tool, such as market intelligence. The third is gonna be your Amazon seller account subscription fees. Uh, the fourth is the logo, and the fifth is the barcode, and the sixth is the product photo. And the seventh is gonna be the inspection video. If we break this all down, right? So cost of goods, right? We're gonna say like, you're gonna budget anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000. The product research is gonna be about 9.99 a month. The Amazon professional selling plan, that's going to be $39, $99 a month. And then for the design work, okay? This is gonna be basically, you wanna budget around $500 for it. Just 500 is what I put. And then for photos, you're gonna budget around 50 to $500. You know, that includes like the graphic renderings, the retouching and the photographer fees. The inspection fees, right, is gonna be 300, it's gonna be 300 bucks. So in total, that's gonna be about 2,100 to about 45, I think that's what I did on my math. So basically, at the end of the day, to summarize it, you're gonna wanna budget around two to $5,000 for your first product. For me, I budgeted 5,000, but at the very, very low end, like I think, in my opinion, you really need at least $2,000 to start your Amazon private label journey. You know, there's some people, out there that say you can start an Amazon private label business with $100, $200. You can do it and start a business with $500, right? But a private label business, but don't expect to make a lot of money, right? If you put $100 in and you have an RI product of 300%, you're gonna get 300 bucks back, right? And if you're doing 30 day shipping times, like like expect to make 300 bucks every other month, okay? Like you, it, it does take money to make more money in this business. But the thing is like, once you get that first product rolling, right? Once you get that first product to be successful and you have success like I did, you get confidence, right? And the ball gets rolling and you start investing more money and you start investing in new products and you start like keeping it going. And then it's just, it just all works. And that's just like how, like I got started with my Amazon journey, right? So like I said, I budgeted with 5,000 and like I had massive success with my first product. It led me to my second product, my third product, my fourth product, my fifth product. Now I'm at like over 45 different products, right? And things have been good for me. I've been happy with all that. 
So if you guys want to learn more about launching profitable products on Amazon, really understanding how to do product research, I highly, highly recommend you guys join our upcoming Amazon type of label workshop. I'll have it in the link below. Just go ahead, visit the registration link. It's posted in the description below. All right, and curious. For those of you guys that are new to the Amazon game or that started you know, with your first product, like what did you budget for your first product? Let me know in the comments below, right? Let me know if two to $5,000 seems reasonable, right? Did you go higher, did you go lower, or were you within that range? And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can make sure you see all of our future updates and all of our future videos. So thanks you guys for watching this video and see you guys next time. Later.